Van Dye the van was hurrying to one side. On the other side, Manamegali said, Sister. Food is ready. She was approaching saying that. Carrie Kaler looked both ways and said, Nandini, Vandiyadeva was not the only one who tried to stop me from coming to Kadampur Palace. Alvarkadian and Vaishnava also brought the same message. My father's lifelong friend and my devotee, Chief Minister Anuradhar, sent this message. Said. Prime Minister Anuradha. Their father's prana friend. So he tries to usurp their father's prana himself. He deserves their devotion. So he tries to do without the rank next to them. Why? Why? He thinks that he is crazy and has no devotion to God. His wish is to crown his brother and make him a heroic Vaishnava and make this Chola country a Vaishnava land. When his brother disappeared in the middle of the sea, the mud fell on his mind. What is the need to stop me from coming to Kadampur for that? Can't I tell them all their secrets? How do you know their privates? Sir. You have forgotten that I am the sister of that Vaishnava Alvar Kadayan. Are you really his half-sister? Are you telling me to believe that story? I didn't believe that story either. I didn't ask them to believe it. I grew up in his father's house. So he called me as his sister. That Vaishnava used to say that I was the incarnation of Andal. His wish was that I should go from town to town with him and spread the Vaishnava tradition by singing the hymns of the Alwars. Did he want you to become a Vaishnava ascetic like Buddhist ascetics? Adhitharakalar asked. Nothing like that. He wants me to marry him and go from town to town singing Pasurams as a couple. He also wants me to bear many children to propagate Vaishnavism. Chi Chi. Where is that monkey, Moonchit Tirumala? Where are you? Did he want you to be his wife? Sir. That is my misfortune. Such was the time when I was born. All the boys who approach me approach me with evil intentions. Shall I tell you about the others, the old gardener's wise cracking bottle? Come again. Don't say anything blasphemous in my ears about Palyavatarayar. He lusted after me. He married me to the end of the world. He honored me by making me, an orphan girl, the queen of his palace. But what is your wish, Nandini? Do you really worship him as your potty? If so. No, no. I am infinitely grateful to him. But with him I did not lead a homely life. Sir. I was born in a poor house. I was abandoned at birth. Yet I devoted my heart to only one. I never changed it for a day. Nandini. Who is that blessed one? No, don't say that. Who are you? Tell me the truth. If you are not my father's daughter, if you are not my sister, if you are not even born to Alvarkadian, then who are you? Just say it, Nandini. I am mad not to know it. Really like it, said Carrie Kaler. Nandini said, I want to tell them that too. But their friend and my friend have come close. I will definitely tell them when I get the chance again, said Nandini. Looking at Valavarayan, who had arrived very recently, the Queen of Palvur asked, Sir. Why have you come back empty-handed? Where is the tiger's head? She asked. Goddess. I have not had the privilege of bringing a tiger's head and offering it at their feet. Vandiyathevan said. A.G.A. Is your bravery so much? You sang all the songs about the bravery of your ancestors? You said that they plucked the heads of three clan elders and planted them in the valley. What kind of song is that? Carrie Kaler asked. Sir. Do you say? Shall I say? Nandini asked looking at Vandiyathevan. Queen. I don't remember singing such a song. Vandaya the van said. You don't remember. But I remember well. I tell you, listen, sir. In the mud of a runk, which made the army green, the red water stagnated and the man stepped on it, Manaparan Bavender Tam Vendan Vanan. Plucked and planted Movender. Their hair. How is the song? 
Come on. You have only the head of a Pandian. The ancestors of this hero plucked the heads of the Cherichola Pandits and planted them in the valley. Disgust and hostility flashed across Karakalar's face. Good plowing. Good planting. After saying that, he laughed out loud. Vandiyathevan could not look up at Karakalar's face. He stuttered, Goddess! I never told them such a song. He said. So what? If you don't know already, you will know your clan's pride now. Couldn't you bring back the head of a badly wounded tiger in a dynasty that plucked the hair of three patriarchs like that? She said. Goddess! That wounded tiger is dead and lost. I don't want to cut off the dead tiger's head. How is that? Did I see the tiger get into the boat with a thud? Said Carrie Kaler. I was the one who showed them the scene. After getting into the boat and lying down, it died. Did it leave Prana because of the feeling of having hurt the wife of the young queen of Palvor, or what? Vandiyathevan said. The grimace on Karagalan's face eased a little and a smile appeared. But could it have died in the water? Didn't it have to die in the boat? Said Carrie Kaler. Like me, it doesn't seem to like water. Of all the deaths, death in water is the one that scares me the most. Vandiyathevan said. Yet you bravely jumped into the water just before? You seem so kind to these ghostly women. Goddess. Seeing women scares me more than water. I jumped because of the prince's insistence. Now I see that there was no need to jump like that, said Valavarayan. Yes, yes. You're only afraid of falling into the water and dying. You're not afraid of drowning others, said Nandini. It was clear from her expression that Mani Megal did not like any of these talks. Sister, the cooked food is getting cold, let's go. She said. The four walked towards the marble hall. Then Manamegali looked at Vandiyathevan from time to time. She instinctively knew that something was wrong in his mind and that Prince and Nandini were giving him some trouble. Whoever is their enemy I will be in their party, don't worry. She tried to console Vandiyathevan through Nayana language. But Vandiyadeva never looked back at her. He looked completely drowned in a sea of anxiety. It is only natural that Nandini Devi's deceitful words and her terrible accusation against Vandiyathevan must have disgusted the people reading this story. However, if we recall her birth and life events as far as we know, we will not be so surprised. The characteristics of human beings are due to heredity in blood-soaked natures. They change due to circumstances, habits, and life experiences. Mute and deaf Mandakini lived mostly in the forest. She had to be very careful to escape from the wild animals. Sometimes he had to brutally kill the animals to survive. Until long ago, her soul, which was as pure as milk, was once filled with the elixir of love. Soon, the spring dried up and her heart became a dry desert. The game of fate has made her a big disappointment. The shock caused her to lose her wits. However, her chest wound eventually healed. The fountain of beloved elixir gushed forth again. She turned all her love for Sundara Chola into a filial love for his lovely son Arul Mazai Selvan. Mandakini's daughter, Nandini, had many of her mother's qualities in nature. But the world deceived the daughter more than the mother. She was also abandoned by her birth mother. She grew up in someone else's house. The daughter was subjected to more cruelty by the countrymen than the mother was subjected to by the wild animals. All that was insulted by the royal family in her youth turned into a deadly hatred of poison and a constant flow of diamonds in her breast. She does not have the elixir of love that can replace hatred. All those whom she loved, neglected, and neglected her, or they got unlucky and died. Those who insulted her and were hated by her lived with dignity. What other reasons would there be to make a woman's soul so deadly? There was no room in her heart for anything other than revenge on those who had cheated and insulted her. The manipulative skills required for it were ingrained in the mother's blood from the day she was conceived. The misfortunes, disappointments, and terrible experiences she faced in life had completely wiped out the soft qualities like compassion and love from her soul and made it hard as iron and stone. 
we felt that it is necessary to mention this character description here in order to better understand the upcoming events in this story. The misfortunes, disappointments, and terrible experiences she faced in life had completely wiped out the soft qualities like compassion and love from her soul and made it hard as iron and stone. We felt that it is necessary to mention this character description here in order to better understand the upcoming events in this story. The misfortunes, disappointments, and terrible experiences she faced in life had completely wiped out the soft qualities like compassion and love from her soul and made it hard as iron and stone. We felt that it is necessary to mention this character description here in order to better understand the upcoming events in this story. Even during the meal there was no lively conversation between them. Nandini, Carrie Kaler, and Van Diathavan were deep in their own worries. Because of this, Manamegali was very worried. She had arranged for water games and a forest feast that day, with the intention of frolicking and having fun with the Queen of Palvur. Her excitement grew when the prince and Van Diathavan unexpectedly arrived. But the words and behavior of the other three after that did not satisfy her at all. Her childish heart immediately forgot the pain of seeing Nandini and Van Diathavan together. Thinking about it wrongly, she thought that it was her fault for giving space to Ajui. After that, the other three people kept their faces and talked fakely and she didn't understand, don't like it. So, after a while after the meal, Manamegala asked, Sister. Shall we go back? Shall we have the boat brought? Are these two coming with us or are they going the way they came on horseback? She asked. It was then that Carrie Kaler came from the world of thought to the outer world. Ah! Ah! Will you return without listening to this woman's prayers? Not a day! Nandini! Have you forgotten, what? Manamekali! Don't deceive us! Said. I have not forgotten that. They do not seem to be able to listen to themselves and their friends. You stand as if you were standing on a thorn. Yet it is no harm. Manamegali. Where, bring the saffron? Said Nandini. Why, sister? Why do you ask me to play the harp in front of people who don't want me? She asked Manamegala a little. Nandini said, no, no. You say the prince is listening. If his friend doesn't like the song, let him cover his ears. Oh my god! I am not an enemy of music at all. In Kodakere, the water girl named Pungazali. Why is the inland sea raging when the waves have calmed down? She sang a song. I feel sick even now when I think about it. Said Van Dye the Van. Some people like some people's songs. Do you like my songs or what? said Manamekali. If you don't like it, who will let you go? It's me. You bring the Yaffa. said Carrie Kaler. Manamekali came with a Yaffa. She sat on the steps of the marble hall. She twisted her nerves and raised the pitch. It is a lyre with seven strings. A swara can be spoken halfway up each chord and another swara above it. For a while she played only the Yaya and showered in a sigh. Carrie Kaler and Van Dye the Van truly forgot all other concerns. They were enraptured by the music of the snake. Later, she sang Manamegala along with Yazasai along with vocals. She sang the divine hymns of Apur, Samba and Dar, and Sunder. After some time, the prince said, Manamekali. Your voice is wonderful. But you have been singing all devotional songs. I am not that much of a devotee. I have reserved all devotion to Shiva to Madhurandan. Sing some love song. He said that. Manamegali's beautiful cheeks were hollowed by the melody. She hesitated a little. Girl. Why are you hesitating? If you're singing a love song here, I won't think you mean it to me. Neither will my boyfriend, so feel free to sing. Said Carrie Kaler. If someone thinks like that, Mani Mega will not even bother about it. Said Nandini. Go away, sister. Can you play such a joke with two men? Said Manamekali. You think these are men, Bishaku? Can you call those who cannot bring the head of a dead tiger boys? 
In the olden days, the brave men of Tamil Nadu would catch a tiger alive, split its mouth open, pull out its teeth and bring it back as an ornament for their heroines. All those times are gone. Let it go. You sing. Did you sing to me that day? Sing that beautiful song, said Nandini. Manamegala played the harp and sang the following hymn. As it were, her voice poured out a flood of elixir with incomparable sweetness in this bottle than had sung for so long. Sweet waterfall. Crawling with pleasure. Holding hands in the shade of a tree, holding hands in the shade of a tree, I remember. In the golden evening in the golden oasis of the palm tree, he spoke to me in the canal language. Sapananda. Thanodi, is that love a lie? It was a miracle that the guard came over him like a thief, and we tied and kissed with joy and happiness. In this way, she used to sing more and more canis to Manamegala in different roles. The other three drowned in the flood. Tears welled up in Nandini's eyes, whose chest was hard as stone and iron due to many reasons. Aditha Kari Kalar completely forgot this world. Vandiyathevan often looked at Manamegalai as if he had woken up with a start. The hero's heart was even more startled to see her looking at him all that time. Alas! What harm have we done to this woman? His heart sank. Those who were drowned in the flood of emotions and emotions did not notice that the incoming wind was bringing them fiercely. He didn't notice that the first small waves started falling in the lake and then they got bigger and bigger. The four of them woke up and looked around when the wind turned into a strong storm and uprooted a forest tree. They saw a fierce storm blowing and the lake churning and the waves rising and falling with the sound of oh. Suddenly Nandini said, oh. Where is the boat? She screamed. The boat was missing where it was tied up. As I looked, I saw a boat in the far distance, swaying and swaying with the waves. Ouch! What to do now? Nandini screamed. If you both know how to ride a horse, then go ahead. We will manage, said Vandiyathevan. Are you making way for the wild trees to fall and beat us to death in this stormy wind? Asked Nandini. Never mind that, we'll stay here till the storm abates. What are we going to do there? There are things to cook, there's Manamegala to sing. I've never been so happy lately. Said Kari Kaler. Prince. That is not right. What will the Sambuvaras and the Gandamaras think? Said Valavarayan. Looks like he untied the boat when he went looking for the tiger. Said Nandini. Sister. Why do you blame in vain? The boat was still at the shore when he came. Let no one worry, my father will send big boats to help us when he sees this storm. Said Manamekalai. What she said was true for a while. Two huge boats, almost like ships, came towards the island. In one of them was the great Sambuvereya. He was very happy to see that the four were safe. The two boats headed back across the raging lake carrying them. Apart from Sambuvereyar, the other four were also in a violent storm causing turmoil. <laughs>